This is Mile High. Do I want to tell the story or do I want to show the mess? You've got a lot of work to do between Mile High. The time has come where we can know we have a responsibility, an ethical and moral responsibility. We have to do it better in order to move people along. Up, down, inside out. If you get your mind right, it is not. It is a receiver of thought. This love is my first technique. It's now time for the show. Welcome to the Mile High Podcast. This is your host, Dr. Daniel Knowles, coming to you at an altitude from an altitude of 5,280 feet. Um, and we look forward to seeing you join us on higher ground in June. Mile High comes early this year. June uh, 3rd to 5th, uh, 2021. So make sure you have that etched in to your calendar and reserve your seats. And of course, make sure you hit subscribe so you never miss any mile high tick uh, for these podcasts that come to you each week. And I am super thrilled to be looking uh, face to face as well, at least virtually face to face um, to, the, my, to my good friend, Dr. Joel Kinch. Um, Mile High MC, which is the least of his claims to fame, <laughs> um, who has done so much for chiropractic. He graduated from Palmer West in 95. Um, he's had two, founded two thriving practices in Washington late, later on in California, and now uh, hails from Castle Rock, which is what you're seeing in the scenic background right now. Um, he's married to his be wonderful wife, uh, and beautiful wife, Kathy Kinch, and two wonderful kids, and was part of the inaugural Legion of Chiropractic Philosophers, and honored to be the first graduating class of the Diplomats in Chiropractic uh, philosoph Philosophical Standards, which is really, truly, truly outstanding. Um, and we're honored to have him as part of Mile High each year. Thank you for joining us today, Dr. Joel. Hey, thank you, Danny. That was, that was, I've been doing this 25 years. It's crazy all the stuff that's going on with the, with the past, man. It's just flying by, having fun. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and changing lives for the better. Yes, absolutely, in this beautiful Colorado. People think it's cold and wintry and everything like that, but it's beautiful out here, man. Yeah, want to keep it secret. Yeah. Want to keep it secret. I always have to say family that members say, you know, hey, I can't live in Colorado. It's too cold. I'm like, well, you can keep being mis mis <laughs> you know, misunderstanding. It's beautiful in the summer. It's beautiful in the winter. So, yeah. uh, and if you like Colorado during the winter for skiing, you're going to love it in the summer too. So, and that's when you should be here in June. So, uh, Joel, let's uh, talk a little bit of tick. Um, on this beautiful day, because we don't do that enough. Uh. <laughs> you, you, you've made the uh, you made the official announcement on what the focus is on this year's Mile High, right? Yes, we did. That's right. We made the, the official announcement that we're going to be focusing on the art of chiropractic. And, uh, you know, there's lots of Mile High has been we talk about philosophy. We talk about vision and strategy as the focus of it. And that's still be the case. But we're going to bring that all into the art, uh, you know, the, the philosophy around the art, vision around the art, improving your strategies around the art, right? So I'm, I'm super psyched about it. First of you all, know, one of, go ahead. One of the things I'm excited about is I can only imagine with your planning and, and who you're reaching out to, it's going to be amazing to have so many different minds, so many different arts, if you will, under one big tent, all coming together for chiropractic. I got to tell you, my, my mind is spinning around who does ask to speak. And we've been, I've been making the list over and over again, because it's going to be such an incredible uh, conglomeration of brilliance um, of people that are focused on, you know, one thing, which is freeing the spine for subluxation, um, optimizing the spine and nerve system and analyzing it. Um, so people, you know, improve, improve their skills around the analysis of the spine. So let yeah. me ask you this. Yeah, what, go ahead. What um what has thrilled you about Mile High thus far? You know, we've been you've been involved Mile High for eight years now. We're going to ninety. What's thrilled you about it over the eight years? That the focus has always remained on chiropractic, uh, 
whether it's from the vendors to the check-ins to the registration to the hotel to the people that are there those that are on stage it's all about chiropractic you know we talk about the high the what and the how and now with mile high coming up next year with the art we're hitting all three on the the why what and how we're doing it and to get so many different minds but think about when i'm thinking about this art we're going to have structure people there. We're going to have tonal people there. We're going to have uh, the network. We're going to have everybody under one roof. And I was thinking back when maybe lyceums or different things like that, it's been done. But for a conference to have so many different thoughts about the vertebral subluxation and its correction, and more importantly, the objective indicators, which is important with the art, hearing the different types of techniques that maybe I never even heard about. What are their indicators? How do they, what, why, and how do they go about it? And how do they post check and how you can bring it into your office, you know, just getting that one granule outside of your lane in chiropractic can make a dramatic difference inside your practice. And so I'm super excited about this year. And, you know, actually on that thought, I'll mention one person who'll be speaking because I talked to him about this, which is Dan Lyons, good friend uh -huh. of yours, good friend of mine. And we, we, him and I talked about that and that this is going to be our focus and he's going to be one of the speakers. So I guess we can announce him as a speaker. I haven't done an official post announcing it, but he knows he's going to be speaking as one of our CE speakers. And so here's the thing. You, if you're going to have multiple people speaking about the art of chiropractic, it's very easy in the chiropractic world to that be a who is, which technique is better conversation, which is not what we're going to do. But it's very easy mm -hmm. to go that, you know, lane where the person speaking is, well, you should do network because of this. And this is what my presentation are. You should do CVP or Gonstead or, you know, just gone. That's not what we're going to do. This is what I talked about with, with Dan Lyons. What can he present that would help someone who doesn't know anything about Gonstead to help them be a better chiropractor? And he called it Gonstead for the non-Gonstead chiropractor. You know, I want that from all the presenters. So like, mm -hmm. how can someone be a better chiropractor from learning some, like I have not learned too much about CBP. I'd like to learn some things about the spine and nerve system that will help me be better at what I do, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I think- Absolutely. That would be phenomenal and, for everybody. Right. And what's what's special about Mile High is, is you can go to a, a, a technique specific seminar for the weekend, but you will get uh, the breakouts of why, why we do what we do chiropractic philosophically. Why do we do what we do? So when you hear that and then you're listening to the all the art people, you can start plugging it into, okay, now why am I doing this? And, and then you'll get the what, you know, what, what are we looking for? How are we looking for it? Uh, the, the aspects of every technique that you have there is, you know, what objective indicators, because, you know, philosophically, are we, are we chasing the pain points? Are we chasing the why points, you know? And under one weekend and under all weekend, you're gonna get the why, the what, and the how, super excited. I think, I, I mean, I'm, I'm above thrilled, especially when you think in many ways, sadly, the art of chiropractic is lost in many institutions, mm. you know, and I don't want chiropractic to be a lost art, right? And I know you don't want it to be a lost art either. We don't want the philosophy to be lost or the science to be lost, and we don't want the art to be lost, you know, and to me, I know there was this place for me as becoming a chiropractor that I thought I was so amazed at what people did working on me as a patient, you know, at that point and said, I want to learn how to do this. This, this is amazing. And there's a, 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 a mysticism about the art, like, like when you're a not when you're a non chiropractor, like, I've got to learn this skill set. So I think there's a certain type of mystique. That's what I want, not mysticism, but a mystique of like, yeah. hey, I want to to be, be able to do have the skill set. I think all of us have a certain, you know, um, passion for being, being artists. So in, in terms of delivering and caring for people and to, to stretch that out all weekend will, will be phenomenal um, and very diverse and growth experience, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. And that's, a, that's the, truly the fun part of practice for me is, is working out the, you know, the why and the what, when you're in there in the art form, each person's different. Each person presents differently. And that's what makes it fun day to day. People coming in may think, or even some chiropractors, I think they're, oh, it's just the same thing over and over and over again. No, 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 no. 
each patient's completely different. And that's the art and the fun of every day you go in. It's that, oh, yeah. first, person, that first person that walks in the morning, the last one that walks out at night. You may be, whether it's 10, 20, 100, or 150, 200 different interactions that day, it's the art and each one is individual. And that focus on that one is what makes the day and the life awesome in chiropractic. Right, right. And, you know, I know that for, for me as well, it's like, it's not cookie cutter. Every person's yeah. individual, even though I might have, you know, rules and guidelines for the technique and analysis approach I do, each person becomes a new, you know, tapestry that you're working with. And so yeah. uh, that's really important for people to get from the stage. So let me ask you, so, you know, from a, from a chiropractic diplomat point of view, right, um, and, and someone who's really dove into the philosophy, um, how does a philosophy, di- you know, help, how, how does it help us direct us in terms of the art? Well, f- philosophically, if, if you are uh, not grounded in what chiropractic was founded upon, it's very easy to get off track. And what I mean by that is this, is where it starts getting mundane and boring is where, oh, I got another headache person in, or hey, I got another low back person coming in. And that's not chiropractic philosophy. That's more of that mechanistic medical model out there. By staying within that vitalistic chiropractic philosophy, where it's about getting that mind-body connection, that mental impulse, impulse freely from brain cell to tissue cell. And then what am I doing? So in my, in my understanding of the philosophy, and the deeper you go, what is it that I can look for as an indicator that would let me know that there's vertebral subluxation present, there's less than going through that nerve mental impulse out to that tissue cell. What am I gonna do art-wise? What's right for me and my heart, as long as it's chasing after those indicators based off that philosophical grounding, the patient, your patient base is worldwide. You've got billions of patients out there. So philosophically, you stay grounded in chiropractic. One, you, you have nothing but practice explosion because the whole town, the whole country, the whole state, the whole world needs your services versus if you are weak in that philosophical standard where you're, you, you have that tendency to bounce outside the lane into that medical model chasing the latest headache cure. That's when it becomes mundane, no fun. You're just grinding. So for me, philosophical being philosophically sound in my practice lights that fuse for the fun at the end, which is the result of that chiropractic clearing. And, and I'll tell you something, this thought came up as I was listening to you, and this is why I think this is important for new practitioners, and I think it's important um, for students, um, because have, part of my focus on Mile High is having a philosophically based program that's congruent, coherent, uh, con- you know, with, with our principles, with the foundational principles, and regardless of where someone is on the spectrum of those principles, that they're facing the direction of, of I want to grow in those and get strength in that area from wherever I am, like mile high is a place if those are in your heart, in your foundation, and I want to strengthen my understanding and so on, this is where I want to go, um, and mile high is a, 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 the place to be each year, and also the podcast and things to listen to, so I was once talking to a student recently, Okay, where uh, this was like nails on the blackboard for me. Okay, Um, he was talking to me and he said to me, you know, I've learned upper cervical work. I don't need to say where they went to school or anything, just just student X, Y, Z. He came to me and said, I've learned upper cervical work. So I'm really happy I learned that because it will help me with headaches, patients. And I wanna learn network because it will help me with people that have emotional challenges. And I, my, my brain was just like, <laughs> oh, my, I said, okay, this person did not learn the philosophy to direct the art because doing upper cervical work is not about that and doing network is not about that. It's about, opti- both things are about the same objective of optimizing the spine and nerve system is free of interference. It's the greatest level of organization. And that understanding has to be underneath what you're doing with your art as compared to I'm doing a technique based on I'm adjusting here because I'm chasing a symptom, right? They have yeah, back pain, so I'm doing this particular approach or whatever. You know, and, and we, and I, I say, I'll, I'll go, I have to be careful of uh, getting in there and getting so focused on clearing out so indicators are gone, knowing that that person's walking out uh, functioning better, right. that I, 
I, I can get caught up into almost just negating those awesome secondary effects of when the body's functioning at 100%. You know, it, I'm not attached to those, but part of the fun is, is philosophically, you'd say, look, you know, when someone comes in and says, maybe my headaches are less, or maybe my headaches have gone away, or whatever the case may be, that's phenomenal. You recognize it with those people, but you got to come back to the philosophy that one, the adjustment didn't do it first and foremost. It wasn't the upper cervical adjustment. It wasn't the network session. It, <laughs> it wasn't a toggle adjustment by me. Uh, it was the power was on fire. The body did what it's designed to do. And we'll talk about a great discussion to have right now, especially in this climate and day and age of what's going on with, with uh, the scare and fear that's out there. What a better way to bring people into your office, say, hey, look, you got to come here, what we have to say in our office, because we ain't living in fear. Just because, hey, look, just because I'm, I, I, I recognize that it's a bad flu season, uh, but just because I don't honor it and living in fear doesn't mean I recognize it. I just choose not to live in fear. And if you want to be that way in a chiropractic office and in life, come on in. My, play, my office is the place to be. Right. Right. So important. It's so important. And um, when you when you you've said something about indicators, which is super, super important, we'll definitely have a, pro, some of the presenters talking about the art of the assessment of assessing the spine, not just mm -hmm. the art of you know, a particular technique or analysis protocol, but the art of assessing the spine and nerve system, right? Because in take it to live, there's a lot of online things about just, you know, look how loud the noise is and how fast your thrust is what's on the video that you posted online, that that's what's cool. That's a problem to me, right? <laughs> and to many, all right? Because we want to actually say, did you assess the person's spine and did their nervous system improve? How loud the pop is not how you determine whether the person like was a, a successful adjustment, right? It's a successful force application. So bringing that art of assessment to that we're assessing indicators that are not like chasing symptoms is a vital philosophic part, vital, central to having a philosophical approach. And you can still celebrate the symptoms that change. Right, we can celebrate yeah. people's successes, and but where do you give the credit to? Mm -hmm. Them, right? <laughs> you give it to them. If 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 you are putting a force in and you don't have any indicators pre and post, you're manipulating. It's as simple as that. Yep. Exactly. Yeah, I lost you there for a second. I'm glad you're back. No, I said exactly. You're a thousand percent right. A thousand percent right. And so I'm, I'm super excited because, you know, I, I've, I've been dipped into a little bit because I've been with Mile High these all these years of, of hearing, hearing Donnie and hearing other uh, uh, networkers and tunnel people. And you and I have known each other for for a long, long time. And we've never really had a discussion, have we? No, we, we, we no. never really have. Uh, well, yeah, right. Exactly. That's and good. I've and that, never presented anything on analysis at a, at a, at a mile high program, you know, yeah. from a philosophical standpoint. So this will be fun. And that's why we need it. Right. Right. Exactly right. why we need it. And to bring that in. And here's the thing. Relative to the art of chiropractic. How can I ask this? Relative to the art of chiropractic. Would you say people in educational institutions around the world without picking a particular educational institution, do you think in our chiropractic education, we're getting a very clear education around the art? I can tell you I did 25 years ago. Uh, but speaking off of just these last years and, and speaking to students at mile high and speaking to the students that come through my office, uh, how to, to echo what you said? How do I say this? Um, <laughs> I I I I would think that they would think they're they've been taught art, but they are more confused about the arts versus empowered by the art. Uh, there yeah. just seems to be a lot of confusion with 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 their with their technique, their certainty certainty regarding it. Definitely. Uh, yeah, you know, and we have, both of us have friends that have been on and off faculty, presidents, non-presidents of school, uh, talking to, you know, presidents of associations and everything's like that. It's, 
it's becoming a, a lost art and maybe we need to become raiders, huh? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and and with, with that, there's a place where for new grad students and people that didn't graduate say, like, I know, for example, I use a frame of reference, my dad, Donnie, and like what he learned in, when he went to Columbia Chiropractic before his NYCC, and he talks about the educational philosophy class that he has then. You talk about what you had 25 years ago, what I had 25 years ago at Sherman, compared to what general chiropractic education has been the last five or 10 years. There's been sadly a shift of the art being lost and it looking very similar to physical therapy. Yeah. Right. Right. And so we want to make sure that through this, people will gain that like, wow, there, there's a there's a difference between a chiropractic adjustment and manipulation. There's a difference between the art of chiropractic and musculoskeletal th therapeutics. They're not the same thing, you know. Right. And it's not the, it's not just lexicon. Uh, exactly. And, and what I mean by that is, is, you know, one of my my great mentors, Rob Sinnott, and Dan Lyons and you. Uh, the philosophical people we talk about, we have to maintain our distinct language, because one of the things that happens is, is when when to get people or culture to assimilate, one of the things that they do is they change their lexicon. They 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 make their uh, lexicon obsolete. They uh, make them feel inferior because of their lexicon. Uh, it's one of the great things about the what and the science of chiropractic that we've talked about at Mile High. Uh, we have to keep the lexicon, but if we're using the term adjustment and we don't have the philosophical grounding or the scientific background behind it, you are manipulating, right? You are manipulating. And that's, it, it's gonna be fantastic to get everybody together. In a different month, a new week and uh, uh, a week earlier into the summer, Maha is gonna be fun. It's a beautiful time for people to get out here. As you can see, uh, it's gonna be amazing. Yeah, and, and I think it's gonna bring a different depth with having not that Mile High isn't already reputated for having a tremendous amount of depth and content. It's going to have a different flavor to the depth with focusing on, on the art. So um, if you were to help someone um, from, a, from a, a philosophical point of view, um, be directed technique wise, like how if you're learning a technique seminar or an analysis seminar or something like that, you, what would you how would you use what, how do you decide whether this is actually a chiropractic approach? What makes something a chiropractic approach in your eyes? Sounds like philosophical we're, eyes, right? It sounds, you know, this is how a lot of fights happen at seminars. <laughs> it is, <laughs> but, I, but we should come back to the philosophy, not to particularly, you're right, it does. It's like yep. this technique becomes, you know, they're, they're, a te they're chiropractic technique and they're not. Well, we should go back to the philosophy of what makes something a chiropractic approach. Oh. Uh, Wow, man, that, that's a weekend. Um, <laughs> well, first, first and foremost, it's if if you're going in and you are expecting to make the change, that's a big mistake. That's a big mistake in chiropractic. Very and that, uh, yeah, chiropractic is honoring of the body and the and the, the you know to use the catchphrase you know the power that made the body heals the body. Sometimes, by the way. Um, you know, it, it, all your all your technique, all your analysis, everything, at least with me, I should say, all my technique, all my art, all my analysis are based off of everything I'm going to do, what every, anything I'm going to do to that person or uh, offer to that person is going to allow them to be better because of themselves, not because of me. Um, and then my analysis is based off that, my indicators are based off that, and where I put a force in is based off of that. Nothing to do with I shouldn't. Nothing to do with symptoms, you know. And that's another big discussion we can have uh, uh, ar around the couches and at the party and around the fire at night is uh, our indicator symptoms. You know, we, we've had some long nights discussing with my friends about that. Is uh, are your objective indicators a symptom, right? And man, that's a whole another big rabbit hole to go down too. And so I have my. Uh, my my foundation of what I look at in techniques of rather than what am I what am I seeing in the body versus what is the body telling me uh, mm -hmm. I, I don't know if that that makes any sense at all but my indicators are more of what is the body telling me versus what can I find mm -hmm. yep and also for me I'll, 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 I'll answer some of my own question on this I think 
what's the objective of the approach, right? So I think what's the objective, like when I'm listening to someone who's teaching a technique program, whatever it is, what's their objective in taking care of the person? Um, and then are they having some kind of outcome assessments that are relative to um, a chiropractic objective? Are they having some kind of outcome assessment? And some of them may be more soft outcome assessments. Some may be more, um, uh, what's the word, um, objective, right? There may be some softer, but there's an outcome assessment in a, in a blend of those things, a blend of more objective and maybe more soft, you know, softer or more subjective outcome assessments. But there's a blend of that in, in developing the artist um, and taking care of the person as an individual. Uh, th those are two of the first things that I think of when I'm when I'm hearing a presenter versus that they're starting to say, oh, you do this adjustment for um, when they have ileocecal valve program problems, you adjust here, right? Like that. That's when I start start saying, okay, well now we're kind of off off the the path of the you know the objective of chiropractic. My 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 outlook philosophically, right? Yeah. So I want to see that that I'm applying a force in such a way. Then the third thing, so objective outcome assessments. The third thing I start to think of is, am I doing it? Or am I doing something to have an eight do it, right? So I'm applying a force in such a way that, hey, I'm thinking that I'm moving the bone or am I trying to find a place to apply a force that the best force that I think an eight can use in my limited knowledge of the world to that yeah. their body can use and can make a change for the better, you know, that it can upset the person's organ, that an eight can make the change or upset the person's organization. Like those are, those are three things that I think of. I'm just off, off spitballing off the top of my head. Yeah, right. You know, it, it, to, to feed off that, one of the fun things I had, uh, you know, in school was, is getting exposed to all the different techniques out there. And yeah, there's a tracing back where, you know, okay, hemorrhoids, uh, L5S1, whatever it may be. And then there's that person that says, well, all my indicators are saying T12 is primary today. And then on a whole nother class, you talk about hemorrhoids and you into the upper cervical class and everything's C1, C2, right? Right. So why is that so that's when i started okay why is it that c1 maybe t12 for my indicators or the the nerve tracings back to l5 why is that why and all i'm going to tick a lot of people off with this is they're all probably right <laughs> they're all probably right with their indicators because it wasn't about the hemorrhoids it was where how can they best help the body uh uh, it, uh, uh, restore it, its its mental impulse and clear interference, getting absence so the body can do what it's designed to do, and that that man that that makes me smile. And and I think it will be a lot of fun talking about this, yeah. and mm -hmm. from a place that every speaker we're going to talk to about. Hey, you're not there to plug your technique. You're there to help with what you know. Everybody in the room be a better chiropractor because. Yeah. At the end of the day, or at the end of the seminar, I should say, at the end of the weekend, what I hope for Mile High is the person goes back to their office, a better chiropractor, and they make a better impact in their community for the person that's on the three people that are on their tables that following week. So um, in their communication, in their philosophy, in their business, and this time focusing on you know what they're doing with their hands, that they have some different ways to look at the spine that maybe they, things that they didn't see through their chiro chiropractic goggles in the past, it's going to be, that's going to be exciting. I am yeah. really excited. Hey, uh, because it's just come to me, answer one of your text questions to me in Facebook posts. Have you ever reached out to Nick Spano? Oh, um, he, he's Nick Spano. Yeah. Advanced muscle palpation. Advanced muscle that, palpation. That, that, that would be a good reach out. Yes. Yes already on my list <laughs> or and 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 this is the kind of thing let's talk about this there's the people on the stage but then we know mile high people we do breakout sessions yeah so all the breakout sessions we're going to be about the art right excellent excellent so our morning sessions will be about the art maybe about palpation maybe about a particular technique and doing drills maybe something like that right so yeah. that will be super exciting and a different flavor to the weekend 
um, you get a breakout session. Oh, I want to go to the one that's technique X, Y, Z, because we, you know, we use acronyms a lot in chiropractic, right? Yeah. <laughs> right. And there's another one for this. And I want to learn more about that approach. Um, and again, from a place that everybody grows in their ability to use these, you know, taking care of people. Yeah. And together we all rise up. And, you know, after this crazy year, you know, we, you and your dedication were able to pull off a mile high this year. Uh, but, but next year it, it's gotta be, we've gotta be wide open. And so everybody's going to be clamored to just get back together for community, people on the same page, smiling, hugging people, you know, getting back to life and getting back to the chiropractic life. What a better, what a, I can't think of a better way than mile high in June. I'm, I'm super excited. So, um, and I, I think it's going to be, um, again, a whole different flavor with focusing on the art. Um, and so when you think of the art of chiropractic um, and going into your office, uh, what is it that helps you focus when you're taking care of people? I, I always, when, when I walk up to somebody, I always say, okay, this is the one. It, it's what I say in my head, this is the one. Uh, and why I started doing that many, many years ago is because I was beginning to, I, I knew who was in the office. I who knew was next. I knew who was over there waiting for me. I knew the new patient in the room or whatever. And I, I really started to question why I was doing that because I knew I was doing a disservice for the one in front of me. And so when it comes to art and philosophically, I don't know if it, it gets into the philosophical world is what focuses me on that art is, all right, this is the one. They came here for you. They, they came here for what you're, you're going to help them do for themselves. You better, you better get shit together and focus on this one person. Love it. And it, it's, whether it's, whether it's 15 seconds or three minutes or, or 30 minutes, you're with that person, right? If, if you know, when you're talking to somebody and they ain't listening, you know what I mean? People on your table and you're adjusting them and you ain't with them. They know. Yep. They absolutely know. Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, I'll tell you one, I, I take it, I take, uh, take that. This is the one. Um, I'm really grateful you said that. And I thought you were going to say something else, which is when I think this is the one I think, okay, what's the one force application of all the things I could possibly do that will make the biggest influ influence in their nerve system. And Less I is more. It, Yep, less is more. Like, okay, if I could only do one force application, which is the one that's going to make the biggest change of them in the direction of greater organization, right, uh, mm -hmm. or, of their body. And then I do it, and I'm like, you know what? Maybe the, you know, there's another one, right? There's a, okay, I got I, I got to change. Is there another one that's going to do that? There's an, what's the next one that's going to be make the next biggest change, if there is a next one, okay? Right, right. Uh, or, or if there's any, not, it, and if there's any at all, those right. are the real fun discussions when right. when there's nothing to do. Yes, yes, and I've had that, you know, with people that have gone on the table. And they wanted to get on the table again. I said, "There's, you know, there's nothing more to do. Your body's in, in flux. It's dynamic right now. I don't need to apply a force to make a change." You know, yep. uh, that which is a great thing to be place to be, and it's a great place to help people understand to trust their body. You know, mm -hmm. that's another thing. There's a story that my dad tells and it's about Arnaud Bernier. So I think you'll appreciate this. Okay, we know Arnaud Bernier, he's one of your mentors. He's one of my mentors um, and people that I've looked up to. And uh, he was teaching at a, um, he used to teach at the network programs. Uh, back in the day. And Donnie uh, was listening to him, was teach, he, Arno was teaching setups and holding the person. And he said, you hold this position, then you do this, and then you trust. Donnie literally thought that he wasn't saying thrust, but was saying trust. And he thought mm -hmm. that was so brilliant. He was teaching, you just hold the position of the body and then you trust. You don't actually thrust, you just trust. He actually thought that that's what he was saying, but he was saying thrust. 
<laughs> with the, with the accent, yeah. With, with, with the French accent, exactly. Yeah. He said he thought all day that that's what Arnaud was teaching was to uh, <laughs> to do that. But this is an important thing. Where does trust come into the art? Where, where does trust come into the art? Yeah. Well, if if you're like I said, if you're setting up on somebody and you're going, I hope this is right. <laughs> you're, you're in trouble. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. And I think that when you're actually doing an adjustment as compared to a manipulation, that there's, you're trusting. When you're doing an adjustment, you're trusting because you're trusting that innate is going to utilize that force. Mm -hmm. and as compared to that I'm doing something. Yeah. yeah. You know? the, the less is more. It's going to be fun. It's going to be fun with that, seeing seeing you know i've i've heard of all the different techniques adjust uh, at what their adjustments look like but hearing it from from people who own it right who own it and totally trust what it is that they're doing uh it, it's going to be exciting to see how people uh interface with others on the table right 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 super super thrilling so um how else last last question then we'll wrap up I know you're going to go practice the art in a little bit, right? Yeah. And, and so am I. So um, last thing I'd like to ask, when, how important is um, outcome assessments in, in, in the art? Well, it depends on what your outcome assessments are. If, if your outcome assessment is, did their headaches go away? Uh, it's very important because if their headaches don't go away, they ain't coming back. Uh, <laughs> and oftentimes if their headaches do go away, you know what else is happening? They ain't coming back because <laughs> they got what they were looking for and whatever the case may be. So assessments are important because it's all, because the body's dynamic. You've said that several times today. It's, a, it's in flux and, and in motion. And uh, if, if we haven't gotten across that uh, every single day at every single moment, uh, your body, physical, emotional, and chemicals, uh, the, the stresses that are upon it can put an interference in that nervous system that diminishes their expression of life. Uh, I, would, I would hope my indicators are all about that versus uh, that symptomatic change. Yeah. So I, I think what I'm hearing from you is that how you select your outcome assessments is important. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It may absolutely. be even more important than the actual outcome assessments. Like, oh, I hear that x-ray is good. Well, mm -hmm. why are you selecting x-ray? So it's like more, what is the why of the outcome assessment that you're selecting, yeah. right? Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, and, and you gotta have, you gotta have all kinds of different kinds because, you know, x-ray is a static assessment. You cap capture that one moment in time, but you, you, you should probably, I, I, I have other uh, assessments. Not only do I have a static assessment that maybe it is x-ray, but I have, mm -hmm. I have dynamic Right. in person right there in the moment assessments right. as well right and you get all uh, i would i would think you would have to have all of those but i will find out at mile high <laughs> <laughs> yeah i if think I'm missing you, out so you know i want i want to acknowledge you for um really adding such an incredible dimension as an mc for mile high um and also acknowledge you for your contributions with colorado chiropractic and acknowledge you for the philosophy session you each do each each year in the morning. Um, I know you get excited about that that session. Uh, can you say something about doing the philosophy sessions each year? Yeah, it get it, it fires me up that morning. But that this one has got me really excited because I'm I'm going to talk about the art in the philosophical session, which will, which will be nice. And it's it's having me already starting to dive into some old texts and and dust some books off and, and, and get in there just so I can hopefully add a little bit of something, something to the weekend. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I look forward to seeing everyone at mile high June 3rd weekend, dial it in early summer. Um, Colorado is a great place to be in the summer, make it a vacation and uh, reserve your seats for sure for you and your team. And um, website, what's website? 
and it's milehighchiroregistration.com. It couldn't be easier to remember. Yeah. Milehighchiroregistration.com. And you know, the longer you wait to reserve your seats, the 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 more the rates for seats rise. So the earlier you pull the trigger, the more you save. And you know, then you can spend more on um, you know, enjoying Colorado and sightseeing. <laughs> You, and you want to get on hotel too, because uh, when we're open wide back up, that hotel is going to sell out. You definitely want to be on site for the yes, evenings. I agree with you. I agree with you. So thank you again, Joel. And yep. uh, thank you, everybody. Hey, never miss any mile high tick. Make sure you hit subscribe to the podcast and keep changing spines and lives and minds with chiropractic. Hey, talk to you soon, Danny. Be well.